Today we will discuss disease not of humans but of the food we eat. And where better to start than the Irish potato famine, which is one of the most important lessons in food production and how it can all go horribly wrong. The potato is a South American plant domesticated around the shores of Lake Titicaca in Peru about 8,000 years ago. Spanish explorers immediately recognized its value and first began importing it into Europe in the 1570s. It spread throughout Europe due to its ease of cultivation and very high energy content rich in macronutrients. In 1845, the Irish population, mainly consisting of peasant farmers, was at 9 million people, which is attributable to the superior nature of this crop. But everything changed in 1845. For hundreds of years, the Irish enjoyed the benefits of the potato because the original stocks had no diseases, a classical case of enemy release, which I discussed before. But the natural pathogen, Phytophthora infestans, arrived from South America through mainland Europe and into Ireland, where it devastated the crop from 1845 to 1847. As many as 1.2 million died and 1.5 million emigrated. The extent of human suffering was enormous and the effect of mass emigration on British, American, Canadian and Australian culture cannot be overstated. 150 years after the famine, 40 million people in America identified themselves as Irish according to the 2000 census. The famine was also responsible for the formalized study of plant diseases through the vital work of such great experts as Reverend Berkeley and Anton de Barry. Like human or animal diseases, the plant diseases were, up until that point, considered the result of bad air. But Berkeley and then the Barry established that it was a fungal-like organism that we now know as an oomycete. The problem was not just a disease destroying a staple crop, but also had a lot to do with economics. The Irish were barred at the time from owning land and unscrupulous landlords created slum conditions, making plots of land smaller and smaller, such that the people were kept in a poverty trap. Once the disease struck, other crops such as corn from the US could not be imported due to provisions in the 1815 Corn Laws. Essentially, the British Parliament, which ruled Ireland at the time, had enacted laws imposing heavy tariffs on imported food, giving an advantage to British farmers. When the then Prime Minister, Robert Peel, tried to repeal the law to provide relief to the Irish subjects, which we must remember were also considered British at the time, the outcry from lobbyists and parliamentarians fearing the loss of income for English farmers prevented the repeal happening. And so the Irish died. The Irish famine is a terrifying lesson in what happens when monoculture, reduced genetic diversity, infectious disease, overpopulation and unfair trade agreements collide, creating the ideal conditions for collapse. Do we still farm this way? The answer is yes. The bread baskets of the world in the US Midwest and Great Plains of Russia are massive monocultures which are currently under threat from a stem rust fungus called UG99 which has spread out of Africa. Over 80% of cultivated wheat is susceptible. We also see massive monocultures in soybean in both North and South America, which is driven by economic incentives as we grow food to feed cars in the form of biofuel rather than feeding people. And we still see vested interests dictating how farmers can grow food. The anti-GM lobby in Europe prevents the growth of genetically modified potatoes that resist Phytophthora infestans instead forcing farmers to spray their crops 20 times in a single season. However, perhaps the most terrifying situation, because it is so familiar to the historical example from Ireland, is the production of cassava in Africa. Like the potato, the cassava plant is a South American tuber which provides the basic daily needs of families. Unlike the potato, it feeds 500 million people daily and not just 9 million, as was the case in Ireland. In 1973, two diseases, the green mite and mealybug, arrived into Africa from South America and reduced the yield by 80% overnight. The international community mobilized and controlled the disease quickly. But currently, viral diseases such as cassava mosaic disease and brown streak virus are jumping from African plants into cassava and becoming more virulent as they swap genes and evolve, like AIDS jumping from chimps to humans. Unlike AIDS, we don't have an effective monitoring system in place to track these diseases as they arise and spread. So, 
While we think a lot about human diseases like AIDS, measles, malaria and pandemic flu, we tend to ignore the crop diseases. And that is perilous. Our history, my history, tells us of the very great danger that is presented to us when we keep crops in high density monocultures or allow economic interests or even political agendas for the few to override what is the best for the many. What we need to do, therefore, is consider the broader societal need when thinking of food security and the many infectious diseases that can ravage our crops.